Hello, and welcome to the special celebration of the first 20 years of the Center for International Trade and Transportation at California State University, Long Beach. I'm Tom O'Brien, the Executive Director of CITT, and I'm joined here today by Marianne veneris Gastelum, who is the founding Executive Director of CITT and currently serves as our Special Advisor and External Liaison. So Marianne, welcome. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for, for having me, Tom. Yeah, thank you. Um, I want to turn back the clock to the mid-1990s when there wasn't a wide array of logistics training programs, uh, but you saw an opportunity for the university to play a role, a role that has since expanded to include research and education and community-wide engagement. Um, what was it about that time and how did, how did uh, CITT play a role? Well, Tom, it was actually the industry that approached us uh, and wanted us to help them address a lack in training opportunities for the logistics industry, for transportation and goods movement, and for the various segments um, individually as well as for the entire supply chain. Uh, out of that came a year-long process uh, of developing the curriculum, and for that we brought in industry leaders, industry experts. Um, we also used that here to identify folks who could teach in the program. Those are people who walk the talk. Uh, pretty soon um, we developed a very unique professional designation program, the Global Logistics Specialist Program. Mm -hmm. Uh, that people could earn after completing all the very vigorous segments of the program. We had students from various backgrounds, um, industry experience, uh, community experience, and um, pretty soon those students helped us to um, make this an internationally known right. program. And uh, this resulted actually in franchising the program um, up to Northern California as well as China. It was exciting, I remember that. It was that. very exciting, well, yes. What was it about the, the nature of the university, sort of as a, as a neutral forum, that allowed it to play this unique role with, with uh, partners in industry? Actually, it was the industry that approached us, and the industry uh, wanted us to help them to address a lack of training opportunities for the goods movement, mm -hmm modes and segments individually and for the entire supply chain as a whole. Um, what they envisioned is for a place where all the industry stakeholders can come together. Um, they can look at the issues, the challenges that mm -hmm. face the industry, uh, jointly address them, share expertise in bringing about solutions. So the folks that we wanted to bring together is not only the industry segments, but also uh, the Port Authority as well as uh, community representatives. And labor, of course. Which and was, labor, of course, Which yes. was unique for Absolutely. the time. Absolutely, yes. And I think that the, the Policy and Steering Committee, which was sort of the outgrowth of that effort and which exists to today, um, plays such a critical role That's as, right. a, as a, a place where these discussions can take place in the spirit of, of education. And I know that uh, given the, the unique uh, relationship that we've had with individuals in the classroom and with our external partners, uh, we have a few comments from them now that we'd like to share with you. Uh, my experience has been a very positive one, albeit on the educational side of CITT as an instructor, but the organization is much more than that. Trade advocacy, reaching out to the community, preparing youngsters in high school to transition into careers in international trade. So I think when you look at the organization from an educational perspective, advocacy perspective, and just a general good corporate citizen, there, there's none better in Southern California. It's important um, to me to be involved in the CITT Policy and Steering Committee because I'm able to represent the BCO community through my partnership with the Institute for Supply Management. And the, um, the BCOs are a huge group of companies. There's not just one company, not just one big box retailer that represents the BCOs. And so this gives us a voice and it gives us a chance to be involved in the supply chain optimization groups as well. CITT is an invaluable tool for the entire Southern California region. When we look at our decision-making bodies, whether it's the Port of Los Angeles, the Port of Long Beach, SCAG, Metro, um, the Alameda Corridor Transportation Authority, the policy and research that comes through CITT helps to guide sound and good public policy. 
Two, from a jobs perspective, we know the students that are coming through CITT are the best of the best. They're well trained. They receive a sound education and background. And that's important because one out of every nine jobs in the region is connected to the goods and freight movement industry. Metrans and CITT have been doing research for now close to 20 years that has really grown in its reputation and in its respect uh, at both the federal and, and state policy levels. Um, as a result, Metrans and CITT have had significant influence on federal policy and now at state policy in implementing the California State Sustainable Freight Action Plan. I think overall it's been quite positive. I think you can look at various people in management positions, whether it be in the steamship industry, in the terminal management side, in the logistics and third party provider side, as well as the importers and exporters. All of them have benefited from uh, the continued professionalism and education that uh, you know, the GLS and the CITT program offer. The value of the town hall is that the ILWU has a venue where its members and family can come and uh, get some education on what is going on in the industry. But this is given from the university's perspective that is very transparent and uh, you know very trustworthy. And it, it's not uh, given from the opinions or views of other stakeholders in the industry uh, that may have uh, their own best interests at heart. So I, I believe that uh, the ILW has benefited tremendously from having this annual event where we can learn about uh, what has happened in the past year and what we can expect in the next year. You know, Mary, one of the other things that was occurring around the time of the development of, of GLS and the launch of CITT was another important partnership. Uh, with both Cal State Long Beach and the Center for International Trade and Transportation. And that's our partnership with the University of Southern California in the Metrans Transportation yes. Center. Uh, it's a university transportation center which now has extended our reach through partnerships with universities in, uh, in Arizona and Nevada and, and Hawaii as well. It's, it's exciting. Yes. Um, and it, it, it's been an important part of the, of the CITT story because it's, um, it's allowed us to do things that we couldn't have done otherwise as a center because of the Absolutely. administrative support and the financial support. Yes. And, and perhaps the most important of those activities is what CITT is most known for, and that's the state of the trade and transportation town hall meetings, the annual mm -hmm. town halls, yes. um, which provided us an opportunity to bring the community and industry and um, everyone who's interested in good, goods movement into the same room to discuss important issues. Um, you were there at the beginning. How did those meetings come about? Well, the uh, first annual, annual state of the trade and transportation industry was actually staged under the motto of intermodal transportation, mm -hmm. uh, future growth, and global connectivity. And this was the motto for all our town halls, I should add. Our goal was to bring the most precise issues that affect the industry mm -hmm. at a given time uh, to the audience, to the industry, and particularly to the International Longshore and Warehouse Union. The rank and file is what we wanted to bring to the campus uh, to hear the information, the forces that impact their industry. And, and that happens a lot now, but I don't think that was the case at the time. Um, no, it was not. Um, I remember the topics that we focused on range from uh, technology, competition, um, um, environment, regulation, and, and of course, quality of life. And, and I think one of the things that both of us are, are really proud of is the impact it's had as an educational yes. endeavor. Um, we've produced videos for each of the town halls um, that have allowed us to extend the discussion beyond that particular evening into classrooms and boardrooms after the fact. Um, some of those videos were award-winning. Yes, you recall. they were. Yes. And we actually have a few clips that we'd like to share with you now. The agreement was forged with the work and sweat of many people from both management and labor. But two leaders proved to be visionaries, working with mutual respect and trust. We, we had great leaders in Paul St. Truel and Harry Bridges. I mean, this would never have come, out, come about without those two fellows. Industrialization and fast-paced development are continuing a 40-year expansion trend in the Asian sector of the Pacific Rim. 
In California, robust international trade continues to power the engine of the state's economy. Southern California's ports handle steady growth in goods movement. World trade generates about 320,000 jobs for California. In the Southland, trade affects one of every seven jobs. Cargo is the lifeblood of the region. As many as 50 ships anchored in the water. No movement for days at a time. Some ships taking 10 days to unload. Not enough freight trains. Retailers waiting anxiously. Delivery costs going up. Merchandise not getting to the market. Consumers finding shelves empty. Demand for goods continuing to increase. Is this a preview of things to come? Will Southern California suffer perennially with inefficient goods movement when growth doubles and triples in the years ahead? After more than five years beyond the terrorist attacks of 9-11, numerous actions have been taken to address issues about national security and safety. America's seaports have been identified as significant potential targets. High on the list is the San Pedro Bay in Southern California, a large population base in the surrounding area where approximately 40% of the nation's imports arrive provides a compelling reason for concern. The local ports, in effect, serve as America's front door for goods entering the country. Economic trends, including a global credit crisis, fluctuation in oil prices, and fears of a steep worldwide recession have contributed to this decline. And now there is more competition for delivery routes. The next decade promises a fight for discretionary cargo. The regional population may grow, but the consumers east of the Rockies could find their goods delivered through a variety of routes and methods in competition with West Coast ports in general and the LA Long Beach Harbor in particular. You know, Marianne, we've spent a lot of time talking about the past, which is good. There's been a lot to talk about, including the town halls. Um, but really, we want the focus to be on the future, on the next 20 years. And uh, I expect that it's going to be like the last 20 years where we're trying to respond to what is a very dynamic and often changing industry. You're, you're absolutely right, Tom. Our focus is and will be always on the future as far as our training is concerned, but also our research and our industry forums like the International Open Freight Conference and our uh, community outreach activities. As you know and as you said, it's not always easy to predict what is coming down the pipe, what is going on in the future. We deal with an international industry, we deal with uh, many competitors and many different forces, but we watch these and we act accordingly. Right, I, I see that in the, in the future I think that we'll be looking at what's driving the interests of the industry, which is as always that need to balance environmental sustainability, um, uh, economic competitiveness for the region, and efficiency of the freight sector. Totally. And it's some of the topics that we've ad uh, addressed in town halls in the past in videos, and we'll like to show a clip from one of those now. The goods movement industry in Southern California is the engine of prosperity for the entire region. With 14 million TEUs traveling through the system annually, the high volume of cargo has provided a steady flow of economic activity and a constant source of good paying jobs. This commanding performance by the Twin Port Harbor Complex is even more impressive when considering it has occurred while adapting to a densely populated, high traffic area with the most stringent air quality environmental standards in the nation. Now, however, competition from other ports, including those in Canada, and new possibilities through the Suez Canal and the expanded Panama Canal have made it imperative for the San Pedro Bay to re-emphasize speed and efficiency in all operations. For Southern California to remain dominant in the nation's goods movement industry, a sharp focus on maintaining rapid, cost-effective throughput is essential and must be continuous throughout the supply chain delivery system. You know, Marianne, you've alluded to this, but in addition to efficiency, one of the big 
things that's confronted the industry and as a result that CITT has attempted to address over these 20 years is the environment and the relationship between the movement of goods and, and the environment. And when you started this, uh, you know, we didn't have vocabulary in our, in our lexicon now, like green ports and clean truck programs and things like that, that, that really now um, you have to talk about when you're talking about goods movement. How do you see the, the evolution of, of this as an, as an interest for the industry, and where do you think we're going with it? Well, Tom, the environmental issues and regulation or threat of regulation definitely have been the big issues for the past 10 years. And obviously, we all like clean air. We all like to live in a clean environment. But the industry had to come up with a lot of effort to address the issues in a very short time. As far as the future is concerned, I would say that zero emission and uh, reducing the carbon footprint is going to be the number one issue for the industry and for vehicle manufacturing. And for us, it's, it's going to influence the content of our programs, the research that we do. It's one of those topics that we always have to, to respond to. Um, it's been interesting to observe the role that the industry's played in all of this. And, and frankly, the leadership role that Southern California Goods Movement um, uh, has taken nationally and internationally. And we have another clip um, to demonstrate that. In Southern California, the San Pedro Bay has been successful in combating many of the environmental problems associated with rapid growth and massive goods movement operations. Clean truck initiatives, adherence to rigorous air quality standards and regulations, and efforts like Pier Pass to minimize congestion have significantly reduced the impact of diesel exhaust in the harbor community. Additionally, the use of natural gas-powered vehicles in the terminals and the electrification of docking facilities to provide power for steamships, which would otherwise be burning bunker fuel, exemplify the kinds of measures that have reinforced the commitment concerning environmental mitigation. No, Marianne, it's fun to see these clips. Um, but I'm really excited about the future. And I know from an environmental perspective, we'll continue the work that we're doing as part of the National Center for Sustainable Transportation, which is one of those Metrans family of research, yes. research centers based at UC Davis. Um, we have the work that we're doing um, with Metro Freight, uh, which is a Volvo Center of Excellence. Of excellence, yes. And, and CITT has been involved in, um, in professional development in that area, in, in mm -hmm. the area of, of city logistics and urban freight. Um, we have exciting new partnerships that will take us into the high schools uh, through work that we're doing with the Port of Long Beach and Long Beach yeah. Unified School District. And, and our newest center is uh, based here at CITT is the Southwest Transportation Workforce Center, which is a Federal Highway uh, Administration Center of Excellence, and we'll be doing lots of stuff there. Uh, Tom, I have to jump in and congratulate you for the amazing work you have been doing in this very short time that you have been taking on CITT. Oh, well, thank you. We've got a strong foundation. Uh, mm -hmm. CITT wouldn't exist without you and your contributions to CITT and the College of Continuing and Professional Education and Cal State Long Beach and the industry and community as a whole. So thank you, and we hope you'll stay engaged with us. We'll be lucky well, to do so. First, thank you for inviting me, and I will stay engaged, uh, as you mentioned, as senior advisor and external liaison for CITT, and jump in wherever I'm needed. Thank you. And thank you to all of you who have been our partners on this journey over the first 20 years. We hope you'll stay with us for the exciting 20 years to come. I'm Tom O'Brien. Executive Director of the Center for International Trade and Transportation at California State University, Long Beach. Thank you. <laughs>